Hello everyone. Um, we are going to talk about external references or as the industry calls them, X-refs. Um, and so um, the analogy I like to use is if um, layers in a drawing are synonymous with pages in a book, then um, when you have external references, then it's almost like you have a library full of books. And, and so you have multiple books about multiple different disciplines. You know, you have architecture, you have civil engineering, you have, um, um, you know, irrigation, planting, all these different disciplines and all their unique individual pages in those books. And then when you compile those together into a library set that makes the whole project. Um, and then each one of those pages has information that pertains to it. Um, so that is, that's kind of what external references are, is um, they are then allow the coordination between each entity to then collaborate their drawings so that they are used um, with one another, but allows the flexibility to um, show what you want, but then hide what you don't need. Um, so hopefully that's clear as mud to you guys. Um, so getting into external references, I'm going to show you, for example, is uh, most firms, the, the title block in a drawing is actually, you know, that's shown in paper space, and that's going to be a, an external reference. Um, and the reason for this is a lot of times the information in the title block changes. So if you had this as just line work on each sheet, um, then you'd have to go in, you know, if you had a 50 sheet project, you'd have to go in 50 times and make those same changes here um, because it's located in one place. Uh, we could change it in that XREF file and then it would populate and automatically make the changes. Uh, the only information that is then not as an external reference is some of the information like the, the sheet number here. That's because um, that's unique to the page. That's actually just here in paper space, just text. And same thing with the sheet uh, title. Um, as each sheet title is unique um, to that sheet, then um, we can't have it apply in the title block because it would then show for all the sheets. But for example, the project title here is in the title block um, and is reflective everywhere. Um, if I select the title block and then right click on it, uh, there's a couple things I can do. I can open the XREF. So I'm opening the XREF here. And then, so this is just another .dwg file um, that has just the title block information. It, it does actually have its own other XREF attached to here. This is the Landscape Architects um, image of their logo. And so that is XREF onto this plan. Um, and then here's all this information. And then if I close the drawing up here, we're back. Another thing that you can do with XREFs, when I select it and then uh, right click on it, you can actually edit it in place. Um, so if I hit edit in place, hit OK, you can see I am able to edit there um, without leaving our actual drawing. Uh, this is, I typically don't do this in the title block. I typically, if we have something in the plan that I need to shift somebody else's work a little bit. I'll do it so that then I don't lose my place. Um, and I will give an example in the drawing about that later. But so I don't need to save any changes here. So with this, um, the main thing that you're going to use to manage XREFs is the XREF manager, so XR. So XR is the shortcut for XREF. And then you can see in this drawing, we have multiple XREFs in this drawing. So um, this XREF, the TB stands for title block 24 by 36. And then here's the logo. 
um, that was referenced. And then on here is the site plan from the civil engineer with some additional XREFs on top of that. And then this is from the landscape architect, their planting plan, which is also another XREF. So there's two views that you can have in here. You can have list view and you just see everything. Um, and then you have the tree view, which allows you to see how everything is connected to one another. Um, and the essentially the tree of that. These are the main files that are listed, but these are sub files that are listed to the main file. Um, files can get really tricky. You can have just, you know, one or two XREFs or, you know, I've worked on projects that I've had 50, 60 XREFs um, from different um, disciplines working on a project. It can get pretty crazy with the amount of XREFs and then layers with their layers and so on and so forth. The big thing to know is when you're dealing with XREFs um, is that uh, the main thing is that the path of the file, when you locate, um, attach as an XREF that file, is it, it then knows that position on where you're storing that external reference, that .dwg. Um, and so once you make that, is it then knows this link of where to find it on your hard drive. But if you ever then Let's say you email it to a coworker and they open it up. Um, that link is no longer going to be valid. And so it can lose that path. And what you have to do is then repath it to the new file location. Um, and then uh, another important thing with XREFs is you can be attached or overlaid. And the difference is when you're bringing it in, is if I attach this file, um, then um, it comes in, hold on, I'm going to make sure I'm saying this correctly. So when I attach the file, um, it, it, it permanently uh, will be adhered to that file. Um, and then when it's overlaid, if I XREF that into another file, then it doesn't bring in all the sub XREFs. Typically the best to simplify that, I know that was probably confusing, but I want um, for the most part, everything to be attached and not overlaid. So um, just to uh, go through this a little more for you guys, this gets complex. So, um, this, for example, here is my planting XREF. So when you click on it, you can see it brings up here the external references. And right here, if you check, I, I put everything on an XREF layer. And then that way, you know, if I want to shut off XREFs, for example, I can go through here. Oh, let me go to my layers real quick. Filter it to my layers. So I'm going to go here to XREFs, and then I could freeze all my XREFs, and it makes all my XREFs disappear. Um, bring them back. Um, but then this way is with the XREFs, if I do edit in place, like I was talking about before, let's say I want to edit in place. And let's say um, I needed to change really quickly this tree location. Um, let's change this one. I could drag it this way and I can move it wherever I wanted um, and it would be in relation. I could see how it worked with everything in my drawing because I still see my drawing here. I don't want to move it, but um, so then I can discard the work and close it. Um, so all these are, um, when I select on an XREF, it selects all the line work in, in that XREF drawing. Um, I can freeze individual layers in an XREF. So you can see all the trees are on a layer. So I shut off all the trees, all the shrubs are gonna be on a layer. 
So I shut off the shrubs if I didn't want to see those. Um, let's see if these raised garden beds, they might be all on a layer. Yep, they're all on a layer. So this gives me, you know, uh, shows me the information that I want to see. But then importance is with the layering in their XRFs. If they have notes here calling out specific stuff that they want in these raised beds, but is not pertinent to me, I only want to see the raised beds, is I was able to then shut off those notes so it didn't clutter my drawing. I only use the pertinent information that I need to coordinate um, the irrigation, for example, for me, but um, and, and show just the beds, but then there are notes that don't apply to my plants, I'm able to freeze them and not show them. So that's also an important reason why you do proper layers, because not only does it make your drawing cleaner, it makes anybody that you send your work to cleaner. Because um, if you have bad CAD standards, when you send your file to be coordinated with other people, they inherit your bad uh, CAD standards and then have to struggle. And anytime somebody struggles, that means more time, which means more money. And then um, it leads to unhappy clients and customers. So um, having good CAD standards is uh, most important. Um, so let's see. So I'm going to open up. So this is the site plan. So I'm going to open up the site plan for you. And you can see this is the site plan. So that's all this line work here that they drew. But then these are XREFs. So you can see these sub XREFs to that file. So now I'm going to open those. And you can see this is a survey based file right here with individual line work on that file. And then let me go back. And then I'm going to open up the other XREF. And you can see this is the new part of the parking lot. And so this is a separate XREF. So then they they have come in here and new curb lines and uh, new drain lines that are coming in. This is probably a light fixture. Um, so they've done this in a separate file with its own layers. So all this plus the, the survey base gets compiled into this site plan base, which takes the existing building and parking lot. Now we have the new uh, parking lot in one file, and then we have the site base for this urban garden in this file, which then all gets combined into this master file that will have the planting, and then soon, once I start on this project, the irrigation will be all laid out on here. Um, and so that is that is how XREFs, um, an overview of XREFs and why they're important. And so every single time this project proceeds forward, when the civil has changes, all they do is they just send me their XREFs. And then when the landscape architects has changes, they send me their files. And I, excuse me, I pop all that stuff in and then I insert it into, um, into my XREF file folder um, for the project. And all this automatically updates because it's all, um, all linked and then it will show all the changes. So it's really powerful in that sense is that you can quickly go through and uh, coordinate and make progress on large projects with people. And that's the power of AutoCAD. AutoCAD lets large complex projects be completed in a timely fashion um, and, and site changes can be done quickly um, compared to in the old days when you hand drawn a lot of things were just left as is because it was too expensive to um, to re-coordinate. Um, so that's a good thing and bad thing. Now, on the downside, because it is so easy to change it and, and, uh, and coordinate, is a lot more changes are made, which means a lot more work is redone. But uh, that is the world we live in.